Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to section 7.3, part two, solving algebraically. Before we do that, I want to review with you solving graphically. So I have two review questions. They are review questions. So I do recommend you pause the video, try the question, come back and see the solution. So in this question, it says the graphs that show the solution to the absolute value of x minus 2 equals to 2 is graph number what and what. So to do this question here, I'm going to refer to the two methods of solving graphically. So remember in method number 1, I looked at entering in left side into y1, right side in y2. So I'm going to look at which one of these graphs shows the absolute value of x minus 2 equals to 2. So the absolute value of x minus 2, I know since the negative 2 is on the inside, and that's a horizontal translation, horizontal lies, just like it did with quadratics, I know my graph has been moved two units to the right, and then y equals to 2. So I can see here this has been moved two units to the right, which has an x-intercept of 2. This is, in fact, the line y equal to 2. So I know graph number 2 is one of the solutions. The second type of method to solving is method number 2, in which we set the equation equal to 0. So that would be the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 2 equals 0. That's method number 2. So since it's set equal to 0, I have a absolute value that's been moved 2 to the right and then 2 down. So 2 to the right and then 2 down, meaning that this here is going to be at 2 and negative 2. This is the line y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. So I know this would also be a solution. So the two solutions are graph 2 and 4. Okay, and this one here, this is also a review, a review question, so I recommend pausing the video, trying it, and coming back. So it says, which of the following functions is the graph of y equals to the absolute value of f of x equal to the graph of the f y equals f of x? So for them to be identical, that means that every point on y equals to f of x equals to y equals the absolute value of f of x. So that means that every point is invariant. So all the points on both graphs are invariant points. Now the only way that I have an invariant point is if they are all positive because the absolute value of a positive is a positive. So I'm going to look for equations in which all the y values are positive. So first thing is, I know it's not a linear graph. Because a linear graph, the arms extend, ex extend infinitely in both directions and cover all the y values, positive and negative. So I know that I've narrowed it down to the option C and D, which is a quadratic. So this quadratic here, 2x squared, is a quadratic that opens up, and it's positioned right at the origin here. This is a graph that opens down, positioned right at the origin. So all the points on this graph are negative, and when I take the absolute value of a negative, it's positive. So you can see the values are different. In this graph here, all the values are positive, and when I take the absolute value of a positive, it stays positive. So I know that C is the answer. Okay, so I want to look in this part two of the video how to solve an absolute value equation algebraically. So the steps that I want you to follow. Isolate the absolute value and then write it as a piecewise function. Be on the lookout for implicit restrictions. That's in restrictions that are not part of the subdomain, but restrictions in which both sides have to equal a certain value. Then solve the equation in each subdomain, check against the subdomain and in the original equation, and then state all your valid solutions. So I have three examples that we can work through. First example, the absolute value of 3 plus x equals to 2x plus 1. So you can see in big bolded letters there I have implied restrictions. So anytime I have an absolute value on one side and I have an expression on the other that deals with variables, I am going to have implied restrictions. So here is what I mean by implied restrictions. If the left side, because it's an absolute value, is positive, 
then the right side must also be positive. So I know that 2x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means 2x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, which means x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half. So that's my implied restriction. Now let's find my piecewise function. So I'm going to look at the graph of y equals to 3 plus x, which is inside the absolute value. So looking at that graph, I see that it has an x-intercept at negative 3. Now to the right of negative 3, my function is positive. So my positive case, we keep positives, so it stays the same, 3 plus x, when x is greater than or equal to negative 3. My negative case, when it's below the x-axis, is to the left of negative 3. So remember, keep positive, reflect negative. So 3 becomes negative 3, positive x becomes negative x. And that happens when x is less than negative 3. So I'm going to take my two cases, which form my subdomain, with my overarching implied restriction and solve this equation. So to solve this equation, I replace the absolute value with the positive piece and the negative piece. So you can see right here, this absolute value is replaced with the positive piece and then with the negative piece. I have the subdomain in each one. This is my subdomain, which means it's a piece of the actual domain of the real question. And this is my implied restriction, which goes for the whole case. So let's solve the first one. I have that 3 plus x equals 2x plus 1. So I have a nice linear equation. So to solve this, I'm going to get x on one side. So x take away x is 0. So I have 2x take away x is x. And then I'm going to take away 1 from both sides as well. 1 take away 1 is 0. 3 take away 1 is 2. So I get a solution that x equals 2. So the first place I check it is my subdomain. In this positive piece, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, which 2 is. The second place I check it is my implied restriction. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half, which it is. So it looks like I'm good to go and check it in the calculator. So in the calculator, I put left side in y1, right side in y2, start my table at the solution, which is 2, and I can see in the table, the check always happens in the table, that I am correct. So x equals to 2 is correct. Okay, let's look at my negative case. So for my negative case, I replace the absolute value with negative 3 minus x, and that is going to equal to 2x plus 1. So let's look at my subdomain. In this negative case, x has to be less than negative 3. But the overarching implied restriction is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half. So it looks like we have a conflicting piece of information here. So I have a tip for you. If the restriction and the subdomain have a conflict, there is no solution in that subdomain because we can't have x being less than negative 3 when it also has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So that means that there is no solution here. So the whole solution to the whole question is just x equal to 2. Let's try this one. So remember, before I do my piecewise function, I need to add, um, isolate my absolute value. So to do that, I'll subtract 12 from both sides. So absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals 9 take away 12, negative 3. Now let's just stop for a minute and look at what we have. The absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals negative 3. Well, I hope you hear the problem there. Absolute value functions are always positive. Remember, in lesson one, I taught you they are hopelessly positive. So this is not true. An absolute value can never equal a negative number. So I can say there is no solution to this question. There is no value of x that would make that true. OK, in our last example here, we have a quadratic. So let's go ahead and look at that. First of all, I want to look for implied restrictions. I have an absolute value on the left side, which is always positive, and I have a 3 on the right side, which is also positive. 
but it has no variable. So since there is no variable, I have no implied restrictions, since both sides will always be positive. So let's look at our graph and decide what our positive and negative cases are to write it as a piecewise function. So my positive piece is the outside arms. This is where the function is positive. So it happens to the right of 0 0.1 to the left of negative 3.6. And I keep my positive, meaning I keep my equation exactly the same. And that will happen when x is greater than or equal to 0 0.1 or less than or equal to negative 3.6. My negative piece, which is all in here, is that connected middle piece. That happens between negative 3.6 and 0 0.1. And remember, we reflect negative. So I reflect it piece by piece. Positive becomes negative. Positive becomes negative. Negative becomes positive. And that happens in between those two values. So that positive and negative case make up my piecewise function. And I have two possible areas to solve. So let's solve my positive piece first. I replace the absolute value with my positive case. And I notice that x in this subdomain has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.1 or less than or equal to negative 3.6. So this is a quadratic, so I'm going to solve this by setting the equation equal to 0. And to do that, I will just subtract 3 from both sides. So I have a nice quadratic. I look at it. I see it can be factored. So I go ahead and factor that. So I have 2x squared, 4 and 1 this one is positive, this one is negative. So I'll set each piece equal to zero. So here, 2x equals one, x equals a half, which is 0 0.5. Now that's greater than 0 0.1, so we're good. x plus four equals zero, which means x equals negative four. That's less than negative 3.6, so it looks like we're good there. So I'm going to check these answers in my positive piece in my calculator to see if I'm correct. So left side of the original equation in y1, right side in y2, and you can see when I start the table at a half, check always happens in the table, I get that y1 equals y2. And then when I start the table at negative four, y1 equals y2, so I know that I'm correct in both. Okay, on this one here, my negative piece, I replace my absolute value with my negative case equal to three. So I have a quadratic. Now because my leading coefficient is negative, I'm actually going to isolate my entire equation to the right hand side. So I'm going to add 2x squared to both sides, add 7x to both sides, subtract 1 from both sides. So I get 0 equals 2x squared plus 7x and 3 take away 1 is 2. Now in this subdomain, my final answer has to be between 0 0.1 and negative 3.6. So looking at this quadratic here, I can see it cannot be factored. That does not mean there is no solution. It's just I can't get to my solution by factoring. So my second choice would be quadratic formula. So we're going to do that. x is equal to opposite b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. So I get negative 7 plus or minus, this is the root of 49, take away 16 all over 4, which is negative 7 plus or minus the root of 33 all over 4. Now we can check what each of these values are on our computer on our calculator, I was gonna say computer, I meant calculator. So seven plus root 33 over four, just so I have a decimal idea, is about negative 0 0.3, and that fits my subdomain. And then if I did negative seven minus the root of 33 divided by four, I get negative 3.2, approximately. These are approximate answers, which also fits my subdomain. So it looks like I'm good for those, so final, check goes in my calculator. So similar to what I did in my positive case, left side of the original in y1, right side in y2, the check always happens in the table. 
Now when you set your table, you can actually enter in negative 7 plus root 33 divided by 4. It's an irrational number, so that means it's non-ending, non-repeating, but you can see in the table it's correct. Same thing with negative 7 uh, minus root 4. I see I've copied the same one twice, but you can take my word for it that actually both work. Um, so both of those work for y1 and y2, so since it works in the table, I know that I'm good. So that is the end of solving algebraically. I like this joke, negative minus 11 degrees is on f of x news, and it says tonight on the absolute factor, is it cold in here or is it just me? Because he's in an absolute value, get it? He's positive. Um, so you can move on to the practice questions that I have in my notes. Detailed solutions, of course, are on D2L. And then you can move on to the practice questions in the textbook. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.